All right, so today we are going to be building our very own thumb pianos at home with everyday materials that you probably already have around the house. Um, some key concepts we're going to talk about today that I want you to be thinking about as we do this activity are the first, that sound is vibration, okay? So sound energy is movement, all right? When an object vibrates, it produces a noise. The next concept I want us to think about is frequency, all right? So when something is frequent, it means it has happened a lot. So a high frequency means that the sound is vibrating a lot, all right? And the higher the frequency, the faster the vibration, the higher the pitch, all right? And the last concept I really want us to focus on is resonance, okay? Resonance has to do with the sound bouncing around different surfaces, and this creates different tones, okay? Different fullnesses of tones. Um, so sound is vibration. Frequency is what gives us our different pitches, our highs and our lows, and resonance is what gives us our fuller tones, all right? Now, before we begin this activity, it's really, really important that you have parent supervision, okay? Your parents need to be with you when you do this. All right, let's proceed. Okay. So we are building a thumb piano. This has a couple of names, all right? It's also known as the Mabira, and it's also known as the Kalimba, okay? And these thumb pianos um, originated in Africa, okay? And because they are a type of instrument that you strike, it falls under our witch family. You have the string family, brass family, percussion family, and the woodwind family. What do you think? Percussion family, you got it. All right, so this is a percussion instrument. And it has um, keys that we're going to strike. All right, so for building our own thumb piano, we are going to need some bobby pins. All right, whatever you happen to have on hand should work great. Um, an empty Altoids can box, all right? This will serve as our resonator backboard type thing. Um, you will want some masking tape. Um, other tapes could work fine. Duct tape might be difficult to make adjustments with. It's, a little, it's very, very sticky. Um, I like the masking tape because I can peel it off, put it back on. It's pretty strong, but it, it comes off fairly cleanly, okay? Um, but whatever tape you have on hand should be fine. Um, some scissors and some popsicle sticks or craft sticks, okay? Whatever you happen to have around the house is perfect. I happen to have two different sizes, some big ones, some little ones. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do to assemble our instrument is take one popsicle stick and place a bobby pin over it, like such. I just slid the popsicle stick in between bobby pin all right now there's two sides of this pin there is a wiggly side with ridges that goes up at the end and then there's a flat side we want the wiggly side to be on the top because this has the springing motion that's going to create a buzz which is going to give us our sound okay remember sound is vibration all right let's write that down sound is vibration. All right. Now, when we built our string instrument earlier this past week, um, we talked about how the strings had different lengths and the shorter strings made a higher sound because they moved faster and therefore had a higher frequency. All right. The same concept is going to apply to our thumb piano. All right. Our keys, our bobby pins, that's the key part, that have the shortest lengths are going to have the highest frequency. All right, so as you place your bobby pins onto your popsicle stick, I want you to adjust 
the lengths of them so that you have a variety of lengths. You want some long ones, some short ones. And the way that I'm changing the length is by sliding them back. So like this, all right? Um, let me hold it right here. Okay, so you can see it. So this one, I'm gonna push down a little bit. And this one's kind of in the middle. And this one is completely against the stick. All right, so now if we look at it right side up, doo -doo -doo, the length is based on the distance between the end to the popsicle stick. So my shortest distance is this particular key. My middle distance is this key. And my longest distance is going to be this key because it goes all the way down here. So even though the pins are all the same length, the way that we place them on our popsicle stick is going to change the length of the part that gets moved, that vibrates. All right. All right. So once you have a variety of lengths on your um, popsicle stick, I would probably not do more than five total. I think for this one, I'm going to just do four because that seemed to work pretty well. Um, once you have those assembled with the ridgy side up, um, you're going to take another popsicle stick and you're going to kind of make a bobby pin sandwich. All right, so let me show you close up. It looks like this. All right, and all of those um, ridgy sides are facing up. Okay, all right. Now, this is pretty simple. So now I'm going to take my tape. This is why I have scissors just in case. Tearing tape can be tricky for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, as tightly as possible, tape my sticks together without getting tape on the bobby pins themselves. All right, um, let's see. I really want to tape it as tight as I can because we don't want those pins to be moving around too much. We want them secure. They will be buzzing when we play them, but we don't want them to like move out of place on the stick. All right, so there you go. There you have it. Cool. Now this Altoids box is go. <laughs> it smells very minty. Uh, <laughs> is going to be my body of the instrument. All right, so I'm going to take my bobby pins. I am going to place them on top. I'm going to place them on top of the can. And... Right now I'm kind of playing with where am I getting the best sound? So uh, let me show you a little closer. I'm placing the bobby pins against the can and I'm pushing down the popsicle stick pretty firmly. I get a better sound when the tines kind of um, hang off the end and I think that's because they have more room to buzz. All right, so now that I I've kind of found my sweet spot with the tines dangling on the end. I'm going to tape the whole thing to the outdoors can. And again, I don't want to touch the um, bobby pins with the tape, all right, because I want them to be able to wiggle about. All right, so, yeah. Okay. You're going to want to, like, really tape this tight, okay? So. All right. This is kind of a rough example. Um, I made a nicer one that I'll show you later. All right, so we are now secure. So when I play this, the longer the tine, the lower the pitch, right? Because it's going to move slower and therefore have a lower frequency, which is going to give us a deeper sound. All right, so let's listen to that. All right, and it's, it's not super loud quite yet, but it is resonating inside my metal box. The reason why this box acts as a great resonator is because it's empty on the inside and it's a hard surface, it's made of metal. So um, that's a really great way to get your sound to buzz, to resonate. And you'll find you really need to push down the uh, popsicle stick 
in order to get this to ring. And like I said before, the shorter times, it's harder to get them to ring, so they kind of have a dull sound right now. But you get the idea. They are going to go higher in frequency as they get smaller. Now, this is the fun part. Um, now that you have your thumb piano, um, it's time to find a bigger resonator. Okay, so we're going to look for hard surfaces around the house that will let this um, instrument really, really buzz. All right, so I'm going to look around my house and see if I can find any hard surfaces, um, especially me metallic surfaces made of metal, um, that I can put this against and play and see what gives me the best sound. Okay, all right. I'm off to go hunt for some places. In order to get that really good resonant sound, we really need the sound to be able to bounce, all right? And so hard surfaces like this wall provide a great surface for the sound to just bounce right off of, okay? So I am going to use this tennis ball <laughs> to demonstrate what I mean. So if I were to bounce this tennis ball off of the wall, it should be pretty bouncy and come right back. All right, so let's try that. Ready? I'm a little nervous. I'm barely going to throw it because I know it's going to bounce. Okay, that bounced. Now with the pillow. <laughs> I like, I threw that so hard and it barely bounced off. All right, I'm going to try again. <laughs> okay, here we go. See? Not, not very bouncy. So we are going to be looking for those bouncy surfaces to play our kalimba on. All right. And so the reason why we're in my, you've probably been wondering why we're in the laundry room is because I found a great hard surface that seems pretty resonant. And that is my dryer. Okay. So without further ado, let's take a listen to the kalimba without any hard surfaces. All right. So it's really hard to hear, especially those higher frequencies. Those are not easy to hear without much resonance, okay? So we just have this um, Altoid box doing some of the resonance for us. So we're going to definitely want to use that hard surface. All right, so as you can see and probably hear, it's not that loud. All right, I'm going to take my kalimba to the dryer now, all right? And I'm going to press down that popsicle stick, try not to touch the Altoid can because we want this to buzz too, okay? So we want the can to buzz, I guess it's a can, and we want the um, dryer to buzz, all right? forgot to fold her laundry so I'm gonna quickly take care of that all right I knew I was forgetting something today um all right so now let me uh, try this again close that see if it's a better sound pretty good all right now I'm gonna open this just because I'm curious to see will the sound bounce around better with the door open now my prediction is yes it will now, the reason why I'm thinking this is because now the sound actually has like another entrance. So it not only is it going to start bouncing from the outside, but it also can maybe enter the dryer and bounce around in there as well. So I'm guessing that's going to produce a bigger sound. Well, one of those really bounced, so let's try that again. my prediction is correct. I'm going to go inside the dryer just, just to see what will happen. All right, so I can hear that my voice is very resonant in here. It's kind of a strange sound. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear it, so I'm actually going to bring you closer. All right. All right. <laughs> so we're going to go inside. 
parents permission. All right. So I'll be curious to listen to this video afterwards, but I can really hear my voice echoing inside. All right. Hello. Did you hear that? Okay, good to do it again. Hello. Oh, it's so much fun. All right. Okay. I'm going to pull you out of the dryer. And now I'm going to go back in with my, my beer. All right. Let's see what happens. Will the sound be even stronger? All right, so I'm gonna place, I don't know if you can see this. There's a little part of my dryer sticking out right here. I'm gonna place my um, kalimba thumb piano on top of that surface. Okay. And now, oops, oh, this is hard to hold. Now I'm going to see if it's going to echo even more. it's sounding even more resonant inside the wool. It's dry. So now I'm going to put this against the wall itself. So this kind of sticks out, projects out of the dryer. Um, and my guess is because this is sticking out and it's not immediately um, in contact with the wall, it's not allowing the instrument to be in contact with the wall, um, I have a feeling that if we put this directly against the wall of the dryer, it's going to be even louder. All right, Because my theory is that the sound has to travel through this part sticking out before it reaches the wall, it dulls it down. All right. So now let's, uh, let's try this. Again, kind of tricky to hold. And I'm trying really hard not to touch the dryer with anything else. Whoops. <laughs> Ooh, that one really sounds good. I'm gonna bring you inside the dryer to listen to this. All right, I'm gonna do it over here. That's got a good sound. But you can hear the difference, right? It's really, really cool. All right, out of there. Now, let's try the washer, okay? So I have a washer that opens from the top. And it also is a pretty resonant space. So I'm gonna talk inside here. Hello! That really echoed. Now, I don't know if you can hear it, so I'm gonna bring you a little closer. Apologize if this gets too loud. Hello! Hello! Yeah, so the different, the different sounds of my voice are getting picked up, they're bouncing around inside the machine, and there's even a, a slight ringing noise that I'm hearing. It's pretty faint. Um, so now let's, let's play our instrument by this opening chamber, shall we? And the reason why I have this open is because I really want the sound to go into the washer and bounce around, okay? Here we go. sounds even better and stronger than when I was playing inside the dryer and my main reason for that I believe is because I'm able to hold it better okay again because you can't hold down that uh, popsicle stick you're not gonna get as good of a sound oh it's so cool all right so there you have it now I couldn't resist I got curious and I was wondering what would happen if I used some larger bobby pins. Okay, so these ones I just happen to have around the house. And I tried them on my Altoids can and they didn't really fit very well and they weren't really making the kind of sound I wanted. So I just kept it really simple and I put them between two popsicle sticks like so. All right, so they're longer so our prediction I think would be that they're going to sound lower. They're going to sound deeper than the bobby pins that were smaller, right? All right, let's see if that's true. Oh yeah, that sounds much deeper. Let's try against the washer, same instrument, different spot. Oh 
Wow. All right, so the washer is actually shaking when I do that. I am barely touching this pin. It's just a very soft stroke, right? And then the whole washer, this big, big washer started to shake. So cool. All right, so. Here, boom, 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 boom. All right, now I also experimented with the wall. So that, that in case you don't have a washer and dryer like mine at home, um, if you have a nice hard wall surface to play with, this, this will do nicely. All right, so I'm gonna hold this against the wall. It's doing it. This one happens to sound lower. So then I also was like, what would happen if I didn't have any bobby pins, I didn't have any out toy can, uh, can I still make a similar instrument to my other thumb pianos? And the answer is, yes you can, all right? I took my popsicle sticks, okay? And I did the same thing as with the bobby pins. I layered them between two larger popsicle sticks so that my shorter ones um, stick out on one end and my longer ones are on the other hand and they just kind of gradually get bigger as you go. All right, and so this is all popsicle sticks. That's all it is. All right, so I'm gonna put my instrument on the edge here and see what happens. My door is closed. We'll, we'll try it with closed and we'll try it with open, see what happens. So the lower, the lower tones definitely resonated the best. Let's open this up. Okay. I need to get that door to stop moving. All right, here it goes. All right, cool. I like that. Now let's try the washer. And I, I would definitely say that with the door open on the dryer, that was our best sound. So let's, let's do the same concept this time. The sound's gonna go in like this. You know what? This is the first time I really heard the fourth tone, all right? So this is picking up my fourth tone a little bit better, or actually a lot better than the dryer did. Let's try that again. Can you hear that? And now let's try this next one. So these ones are the trickiest. Like, and I've noticed this on my other um, kalimbas too. The smaller keys are trickier to get to bust. Let's go into the kitchen. I would... All right, so let's take our Altoids can um, bobby pin Navira and put it against the microwave. See, that really works. Um, I'm going to open this up. Why not? I'm going to show you kind of what I'm doing. So I brought it inside the microwave. Now the glass isn't as bouncy as metal, but it is still a hard surface. All right, that's cool. Um, here, let's do against the oven. Again, make sure everything's off. Make sure your parents are with you so that you have supervision, okay? You don't want to do this without parent supervision. Uh, but I chose this because it had a nice hard surface. Cool! All right, so there you have it. I hope this video gives you and your family some ideas for how to build your own thumb pianos at home. Um, I want you to play around with the different lengths of your tines so that you can change the frequencies of each note. Um, remember, the shorter tines have a higher frequency when they move, when they vibrate, and those produce a higher tone. And those longer tines vibrate um, slower, and so they have a lower frequency and therefore produce a uh, deeper tone. All right, so play around with the lengths. Um, I also want you to play around with the different surfaces you play your instrument on, all right? So try different areas out, all right? Um, and see what gives you the best resonance. Um, last but not least, 
play around with the kinds of materials you use to build your um, thumb pianos. I gave you a few ideas, but I bet you can come up with some ideas that are completely original that I would never in a million years be able to think of myself. So please, please, please uh, have fun with it, experiment, enjoy. Um, again, I want you to have parent supervision when you do this activity at home, and I would love for you to share what you come up with with your parents' permission, all right? Okay, I look forward to hearing what you come up with, my friends. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye.